Yo, what is up, Crocs and Climb? I'm just listening to Cora fans and others who have some fun this video. I'm sorry, it's Crocs and, and first of all, I want to apologize. I know the video is late, but uh, it was a struggle to even watch the episode. And then as soon as I finished, uh, you know, watching it, I was going to do the review, but then I had people over and then they were being kind of annoying and really loud to the point where I couldn't even record. So I had to like just put it aside till now because now's when they left so now I'm free to, to do the video also this is still the room that I'm staying in it's just that we moved stuff around um, so the light might be an issue in this angle but we'll try to work with it um, so today is the finale it's literally the, the finale of Legend of Korra uh, book 4 and the entire series thank the lord uh, <laughs> let me no no let me let me rephrase it I, I liked book four. I did. It's definitely my favorite of the four. The only competition, on my, on the other hand, is the first one. That is literally the only competition it's had. And I'm going to go into details because next Friday, since the series is over, next Friday I'm going to be doing basically like a comparison slash versus video. You know, the original Avatar the Last Airbender versus Love and Korra and how I see them and how I, they fare up against each other in my opinion. Um, so that's going to be a video for Friday, uh, next Friday. But the finale itself was actually not bad. Um, I am a little disappointed with how it ended, uh, like like the last part. Um, no, the the the, la the end of the fight. Uh, the the last scenes were okay. Uh, it does bring up some questions. Uh, but we're going to get into that when when we get there. So, essentially. The whole point of this whole thing was to stop Kavira's giant robot thing. Uh, obviously, everybody that was in the tower or the building that, that got moved to Asami's place, and then everybody else, like every every bender available, was supposed to go and try to stop the giant thing. Um, and I think it's funny how <laughs> freaking Milo is the one that came up with the strategy. Because uh, essentially, okay, so the giant mecha robot, we can't really do too much to it because, well, it's it's not made of steel, it's made of titanium, was it titanium or platinum? I think it was titanium. It was a very strong metal, okay, that's the whole purpose. They can't bend it, okay, it's it's kind of impossible to bend it, so... They have to find some way to knock it out, knock it out balance, try to destroy it and stuff like that. And the thing is, Milo sees a paint store and he's like, I got an idea. And he like breaks through the door and he, like, everybody's like, what are you doing? And he's like, okay, I'm going to get this, buy me some balloons, I got an idea. And so, essentially, it was supposed to be, um, I don't know if you guys remember in The Last Airbender, that uh, what what who the heck were they fighting? I think it was Azula's army when they were going to I think it was like the Western Air Temple, and they like they were basically non air bending people that were gliding, and they had balloon uh, not balloons but bombs. And it's kind of like that same mentality. They fill up the balloons with paint and then they throw them to blind them. And which was I mean it's a great idea to be quite honest. Uh, and to think that Milo whoa. Right. To think that Milo, the little one, came up with the strategy was, I've always said this, Milo is my favorite of the three kids. And this just, this just set into stone because it's the finale. So, so that was the strategy. They are going to blind it and then they're going to knock it down. Bolin, since they can't bend it open, Bolin is supposed to like lava bend to kind of like made it, make it lean in one side. And then, like, the metal benders, like, you know, Suyin and, and the twins were supposed to, like, metal bend some wires to try to, you know, put the, like, you know how when they trip and trip people, they, with those, they tie your legs together, okay? That's basically what I'm trying to say. So that's what they were doing, and then the airbenders were supposed to, like, push it um, to try to knock it down. Um, unfortunately, Kuvira knows how to balance things out, so it's, like, she, she was able to stay, like, you know, standing, but yeah, she did waver a bit, and she was like, whoa, falling down, and kind of like how I did earlier, uh, <laughs> wait, 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 stick it together, um, but anyways, uh, so that was basically the purpose, 
The problem is they couldn't really do anything too well. The hummingbirds that they were working on, unfortunately, were not working correctly. And then the people were panicking because they were in the train tracks, you know. And they were like, okay, we got to calm down. The, the drills were destroyed. People, the, the freaking small mech suits, people were freaking out. And then uh, Wu was like, okay, hold on. I'll be right back. And then he like left. And then basically everything was left to um, I, pa, Pam, pa, Pam. I think that was her name. Uh, it's Tenzin's wife. I think it's Pam. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it was basically she she had to like try to keep everybody relaxed and chilled But I think it's funny because she's like Because she, she told Wu I was able to raise Milo. I can handle this and I'm like <laughs> I laughed Okay, I kind of I kind of took it um, So they can't really do too much to this thing They can't knock it down because she keeps you know regaining balance. They can't break through it stuff and then actually Lin goes to get Asami's dad from jail because you know he's a freaking genius the dude was incognito for who knows how long working for Amon you know uh, <laughs> he's a smart guy that's the whole point apparently they have these like plasma beams which can cut through the steel through, through the metal uh, so they, they could try to like break in that way um, so they were supposed to be working on that, and then they were going to try to, like, slow Kuvira down as much as possible. I mean, they were doing okay. They were doing decent, but, you know, stuff doesn't always work out, and well, they were getting their butts whipped and stuff. <laughs> uh, now, okay, so essentially what happens afterwards, this, 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 I thought it was nice. It was a tight, I, I still think it's stupid that we, we it happened, uh, but Varric proposed to Julie. And it was, I was like, wait, what? Uh -huh. I mean, I knew, uh, obviously there was going to be something between the two. Because they, they've they been in every book, they've been in every season. And they were always put together, right? They were always pushed together. So I kind of, like, half expected it. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys were like that too, where you kind of figured that something was going to happen. But to me personally, I was like, Beric needs to apologize in some way, shape, or form before anything romantic happens. And then it just just happened. She, he's like, hey, before we go, I know that there's some dangerous stuff that's going to happen. And then, like, he, he actually looked like he was going to apologize when he knocked down the mech, the, the small mech suit. Because he, like, sent an electro wave. It looked like he was going to apologize. But then because danger, well, they didn't, and they, he wasn't able to talk. I wanted to see more. I wanted to at least see him apologize in some way before the proposal happened. But no, it was just a straight up proposal. And Julie was like, "Yes," and then it was like, "Okay." <laughs> it, it was really. It was really. It was. It was just a straight up. Ask question. Done deal. That, there was no, there, I mean, Julie, I feel like it's supposed to be like a strong female representation because she's, for the most part, she does more of the work than, than Beric does. And she technically did stand up to him, but then came back, which was a dumb thing. But, you know, the point is, I kind of would have liked it if she would have been like, I'll accept the proposal if you apologize first, and then that would have made it okay, but apparently she was waiting for him to propose, and then it just happened, and <laughs> so they're going to go in one hummingbird suit, and then uh, someone's going to go with her dad in another one, and so they're supposed to go in, they were buzzing in everywhere, uh, unfortunately, Barrick's thing ended up breaking down, like one of the wings flew off, like not, well, Kuvira uh, knocked it off, um, and so like they, but they ejected, so it's okay, they're fine. Uh, and then Asami and her dad were working on another place after Korra kind of froze the thing. And then the dude just committed, I mean, it was a noble sacrifice to the end, I guess. Uh, but he basically sacrificed himself to open the thing and so that they could come in. Um, which they did, you know, it was, it was Korra. 
it was, which by the way, Asami was like he ejected Asami out, so she's fine. But then she, he got crushed afterwards. Uh, so it was Korra, Mako, Bolin, um, Lin, and Su Yin. They were able to infiltrate this, the giant. Um, by the way, why is it that anytime anything big happens, like like the the, the the final battle or whatever, Asami always gets left behind? I mean, I understand the fact that she's not a bender, but neither was Sokka, and the dude was in every like major fight, or at least he had... Oh, sorry about that. He had some purpose. He had a major plot point. Like, because he was around, he always had something to do. Especially after he got his sword. Like, it just felt like, I mean, hey, I'm not even going to do anything. I, I was upset. But, but, like I said, we're going to get into that in the, the comparison. Um, but anyways, so they infiltrate. And the way they split up is that Korra is supposed to go towards Kavira. Lin and Suya are supposed to stop the the weapon like the, the the arm cannon thing and then Bolin and Mako are supposed to stop the energy source which is two levers they have to like pull down at the same time so you have your groups so Korra freaking climbs all the way up to Kibira. Uh Bolin and Mako obviously go to the um, what was it like it's not the engine room it's I guess you could say the power source and then um you know, Lin and, and Su Yin go to destroy the Dark Cannon, which by the way, that was sick how they did that, like, they just freaking wrecked the thing, and then, like, Kuvira just whipped off the arm, off the giant, just threw it out, and I'm like, well, then, I guess that wasn't useful enough for you, um, and then Bolin and Mako are, like, trying to, like, they, they had some troubles, um, to, you know, to do the thing, but... And then it ended up not working, so Mako kind of like did a pseudo sacrifice because he technically didn't die. But he lightning bended the because did you okay the power source is a bunch of vines and remember how the vines with too much energy explode. Uh, so Mako kind of did a pseudo sacrifice because he did try to stay to stop it. Um, and he did technically almost die, but Bolin saved him. Um, so that thing blew up, and then Korra and Kuvira were having some a match. Which wasn't that bad. The match itself, it felt like since it was such a crowded room, it's not like they could have done too much. Um, I, I am a little upset about that, but what they did inside the crammed room wasn't bad. It's just that it would have been better if it was an open area. Um, like Aang and, and Ozai's. Um, and then so the machine is basically done over with. And then Korra kind of like follows Kuvira because she tries to leave. Which, by the way, if you're going to be a tyrant destroyer of the world, you know, mind control dictator, you uh, you can't show Saturn's weakness at the very end, okay? This, this is this is the biggest problem. I, I'm, I'm going to go into a mini rant right now, okay? Remember how, I, I don't know if you got, if you watch, if you watch my reviews, you know that when Korra and Kuvira fought in, Z in Zaofu, I said that I wanted one more fight in between that one and the finale fight to show Korra is able to handle Kuvira to the point where Kuvira would have to retreat and then at the final fight they're both at what would be considered their best and they would have an epic match, right? That's what I was hoping for. They saved that for the end and made Kuvira look like a coward at the very end. Which was ridiculous, because then she's literally scared of Korra for no freaking reason. Um, and then Korra, like, okay, look, look. Aang didn't kill Ozai, okay, but he destroyed him. In, in, in a bigger way, he did something to Ozai that's even worse than killing him. Korra basically just said, hey, I mean, like, they, they, they kind of caused a huge bomb, like, basically, like, the equivalent of a nuclear explosion. Which caused a new portal, spirit portal to be opened. Basically, it was just like, hey, I understand how you feel. I know that I haven't, because Kuvira was apparently an orphan. Like, we, we know this, right? And then, like, yeah, like, maybe she was an orphan, but she has felt fear and alone and all this other stuff. And yada, yada, yada. And they have this weird old conversation that just really seems like it was just thrown in there. Um, and then Kuvira just basically surrenders, and I'm like, Really? You're gonna end it like that? 
Come on, it's this is this is the thing you've been building up for, and you end it like that? Like, oh. Anyways, back to the normal review. That happens, right? They go. She gets basically arrested because, oh, I give up after doing all this. And then, so we see we see Varric and Julie's wedding, which I gotta say was kind of nice. Uh, and like Varric, Val was like, "I'm gonna make sure I don't I treat you I don't treat you like, as you know, basically like a, a, a subject of his, like you know, like a like she's she's below him. He's gonna treat her like a woman, like his wife, and I was like, which was nice. I mean, at least when you show some character change from the dude. I mean, he's been the same." Since the beginning, but it it was a nice. It was nice that they. they I, what I thought was funny and cool about it is the fact that Julie's the one that tipped him. Like you know how usually it's supposed to be you may kiss the bride. It wasn't like that. She like okay so so Julie and Vary and then Julie is the one that like grabs him, tips him, and kisses him. And I'm just like, power to Julie. There we go. Uh, it was it was cool. It was it was a nice thing. Um, and we have some some things with Tenzin and and Korra and talking about the whole thing. You know what what's happened throughout the the whole Korra lifespan thing. You know, not Korra lifespan. The Legend of Korra series. Um, and then we had another moment with Sami. Now here's here's I, I will say this. This is a gripe I had. The thing that Airbender, I'm gonna, this is good, this is not gonna be, I mean, I guess I could probably add it afterwards. But the thing with, with the last Airbender that had, that, that did, did good at the very end was the, the, the little teaser with, with Aang and Katara. Okay, that was the, 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 the that was the moment everybody was waiting for in the entire series. I mean, like, obviously there was a lot of other things that we saw before which are badass, but that was like one of the things that, Every single fan of The Last Airbender was like waiting their entire time for. Like we were, like they teased us before when they were in the cave, and then um, and so that was basically the the thing. It was it was there, and we had a nice moment to end it. They didn't do that. I mean, we we saw the other characters too. Like we saw everybody that were chilled out and everything, and then it was Katara and Aang outside, and they had their moment. We didn't even see Mako in there or Bolin. Like it was, it was. I mean, we saw Bolin because he was the one that was doing the 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 ceremony, right? Right. He was the one that was doing the whole wedding thing, where he like, I guess he was he was the priest. So we'll just say that. Gosh, uh, I'm trying not to go religious on this thing. And Mako was just talking to Wu, but we didn't see an interaction with the four. And then it's like Korra and Asami are talking, right? They're chilled out. They're they're talking about how all this other stuff, the, the stuff that's happened, and they essentially just like decide to go away together by themselves into the spirit world with nobody else. It's just literally them. What? Okay, this this is the thing I saw in the comments of the video, like the the episode. I don't know what they were. Te I don't know what they were pushing with that, because. Also, I gotta say, we didn't see a, a, a moment with Bolin and and Opal either. That, that pissed me off. Okay, but like, we didn't like it was them walking toward the portal, and they were and then they held hands as they walked into the portal, and then they faced each other, holding both their hands. And then I saw people in the in the comments of the of the episode going like. So are they lesbians or what? And I'm actually asking the same thing too. Like I don't have a problem with that being a thing, but could we have seen some indication of this? Like the only thing, like yeah, I can I say they're girlfriends, but you know, girls say they're girlfriends with other friends as well. It's a typical language of girls to have. They they call each other girlfriends for no freaking reason. I I thought that's what they were, but if they're actually like real girlfriends, could they have hinted it at some point? Cause that just seems really weird to just put in the very end of the like the very last moment of the series. You can't do that. Like it's if if there was gonna be a thing between them, show it off in some way. Cause they she she had a moment with Mako when he was talking to Wu, and I was just like, so are they getting back together or not? 
So I, I, it just leaves this question in everybody's mind about who the head core is supposed to be with. Like I don't, like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with her being with Asami, but at least have shown it somewhere. Like, hey, this is the way it's gonna go, because there was no indication of it. Like that's that's my that's my problem with it. I mean, the only thing we can go off, the only thing we can go off. On this whole, on this whole possibility, is the fact that Korra only responded to Asami's letter. That is the only thing we have going for that. The only thing, and nothing else. They had no moments or anything like that. So I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were planning. But if if they were gonna do that and show show it off some way so that people don't just you know scratch their heads at the end of the series. But anyways. It's over. I'm done. Core is over. Uh, next week, um, the the comparison video, and I'm done with the series. Unless they come up with another one, which I hope to God they don't, because <sighs> Nick Rollin and apparently the creators just don't get along right now. It's just stupid stuff all over the place. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sarah Crocs, and leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Let me know. What you thought of the finale? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you just... Are you are you confused too? Because I want to know. Like, I, I want to make sure... Because, like I said, the people in the comments of the episode were questioning their, their the, whole perp, the whole point of that last scene. And so I want to know what you guys think uh, in the comment section down below. But anyways, guys, that is going to be for this review. Um, I hope you guys look forward to the... Last Airbender vs. Legend Korra episode or video that I'm going to be doing next week. It might be a little long, too. But Last Airbender is one of my favorite shows of all time, so <laughs> that's also pointing to really bad jabs at Korra. So <laughs> look forward to that. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to leave that in. I'm Charles Croxon, and I'll see you guys in future videos.